All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to High Tech Wellness Wednesday. This has been an awesome series. I hope you all have been learning so much. I know that I have. I, I was just talking to Dr. Khan, and not just because he's Dr. Khan, America's health doc, I've been uh, telling him about some good ways I've been changing my life with these Wellness Wednesdays with the being the, the person that you brought in with uh, talking about smoothies and the way to eat and Cassie Sobleton with all the colors in our foods and trying to get everyone to eat that way. Uh, it's been great. And I, I think the nice progression in this is now having Dr. Khan to join us. It is um, truly a, a dream come true for me to bring such a fantastic person to the high tech community because he is so knowledgeable. And what I love, love, love about Dr. Khan is that he is all about preventative um, and knowing ahead of time about your body and not waiting until you find out something's wrong. But even if you do find out something's wrong, there's ways that you could talk to him, whether it's in person, telemedicine that he does now um, about your health and things that you can do to reverse some of those things. So I won't steal his thunder too much, but I want to start with a statistic that I read online um, about Hispanics, particular Hispanic women in heart disease. And I think this will really uh, bring this home to you and why having Dr. Khan join our community is so important. So here's some stats. On average, Hispanic women are likely to develop heart disease 10 years earlier than non-Hispanics. And then only one in three Hispanic women are aware that heart disease is their number one killer. So I know there's so many women and you know there's statistics for men out there as well. So um, it's something for our community to pay attention to. And Dr. Khan was starting to assess already. Um, he has a Latina daughter-in-law. Um, so he's very proud of her and was talking about how some of our food choices and things may be um, associated with that. But just a couple of things about Dr. Khan is that he believes in plant-based nutrition uh, is the most powerful source of preventable, preventable medicine. So if you are ever in Detroit and you get a chance to come to Royal Oak, Michigan, he has a restaurant there, you have to go and eat at that restaurant um, and let him know you're coming. He's one of those guys, you can message him on LinkedIn and say, hey, I'm coming to Detroit and I'm coming to your restaurant. Uh, so that'll be great. We'll be sharing some other resources too that you can find out um, about different products, about different books. The, I know it's something that's caught everyone's attention is the dead execs don't get bonuses. Um, and that's, that's true, right? We have to take care of our health and our heart. So I'm going to turn over to Dr. Khan. You're going to learn so much more about him than I could say. Uh, so let's go. Dr. Khan. Thank you very much, Lena. Nice to connect with the high tech community. Um, I've actually, when people ask me what I do, I say I'm a high tech, high touch, high fiber cardiologist because I always want you to have those brightly colored, rainbow colored fruits and vegetables and giant salads that you talked about in the smoothie and Cassie talked about. Uh, I'm very high touch because I just, my emotional personality, little Jewish, little Italian, little Latina, Latino, all combined here in my lineage. But high tech, and it's funny, that's the name of your organization, because I'm actually gonna focus more a little bit on the high tech part. Uh, there was a book uh, that I wrote, first edition, now it's out in the second edition, Dead Execs Don't Get Bonuses, How to Survive Your Career with a Healthy Heart. As you'll see in a moment, I mean, it really is a risk and this isn't a Debbie Downer scary talk. It's really much more let's empower, let's be proactive and let's stay healthy and dancing to the very end. Uh, I, you probably don't know this, I'm also the endorser of the only bean health bar in the United States. So uh, I uh, speak with my beans uh, forward. So anyways, uh, that's a new thing that I'm doing now is uh, promoting a bean snack. So how to detect and prevent heart disease. Dry topic, but we're only gonna go 20, 25 minutes. I call it the PDR method for uh, prevent, detect, reverse. But just as Selena said, uh, the, the Latina community, Latino community is a little more prone to heart disease than the average uh, person walking the streets. And it still remains the number one cause of death in the world. In 2020 and 1920 and 1820, heart diseases remain the number one cause. Just a series of people, these are all prominent CEOs. The uh, gentleman with the big smile in the upper corner of the screen was CEO of McDonald's, dropped dead of a heart attack at age 60. He had good doctors, he had access to medical systems, dropped dead tragically. You know, Tim Russert, some of you will remember, famous news reporter, dropped dead. Uh, Gentleman in the corner was a major banking figure. Woman at the top was a European soccer uh, executive. It just 
tragically losses that never can be recovered. And those are just the fatal ones. Again, rather somber topic, but I breathe and live and practice uh, medicine every day that we could have prevented every one of these with a little bit more of knowledge and aggressive. And this is the problem. Coronary artery disease is the fancy word for clogged arteries that cause heart attacks and can rob us of life. If it was attacking our face rather than just slowly developing as a problem inside, we do something about it. But we don't have a medical system that has a program. It is available, it's just not taught. To uh, you know, ask the question, how am I doing? Am I getting through my 40th year, my 45th year, my 50th year with a healthy heart or not? Yeah, I feel good, but I know that this is a slow disease that chokes off our health. How can I stay on top of it and not just on blind faith be another statistic that might come up. So just a couple things to take away from this, and I can't go deep into every one of these. And it, it should sound shocking if you just think about this for a minute, but there are very strong medical uh, research studies that say of all these six, 700,000 people a year in the United States alone that die of a heart attack or a stroke, that the vast majority of them could have been prevented and very often just walk more, smoke less, eat better, uh, does the majority of the job. A very important lifestyle message is you can't get tired talking about over and over. But that same program, walk more, smoke less, eat better, and largely plants, can also prevent the majority of cases of type 2 or adult diabetes. Not all of them are linked to the obesity crisis that is present throughout the world, very prevalent in the uh, Latin community for sure. But a lot of it is linked to the weight challenge and getting back. We have a, in Detroit, we have a doctor of nursing, um, happens to be of Jewish background like I am. The irony is she goes out to Indian reservations and has to actually teach Indians on the reservation how to make the food that their grandparents made 80 years ago. Corn and beans and rice and vegetables, just to get them away from all the free food they get, the Velveeta and the burgers and the chips, uh, and get them back to real whole natural foods and their diabetes goes away because they're unbelievably prone. It's, it's actually just simple lifestyle that does most of this. And even cancer from breast cancer to colon cancer to um, prostate cancer are largely avoidable with simple measures. Uh, all of this comes from studies like Harvard, studies like uh, Washington University and all. There was a study on my topic, heart disease, that if you simply do these five bullet points, and I mentioned several of them, don't smoke, walk 30 to 40 minutes a day, you want to do more, do more, but at least do that, eat a lot of fruits and vegetables, in this case, more than five, very few Americans eat more than five, that's a really big salad, grab an apple, maybe make a smoothie, that could be two, three, four servings in a smoothie, you know, uh, take some carrots and celery, get sleep at night, don't shortcut sleep. And if you drink, just drink in moderation. And that is defined by the government as a drink a day for a woman or one to two for a guy. If you don't want to drink, don't drink. Uh, don't start if you're not drinking. But in studies that come out of Europe, people that do five of these five habits have 85% less risk of heart attack than people that do none of these five. So we control these things. We can be in charge. We're the captain of our ship. And you're not going to get taught this most commonly in your doctor's office, but they're powerful. And you can do the same study in Boston at Harvard School of Public Health. You can do the same study in California and Loma Linda. This equation works all over the world. Take good care of your body. There are certainly big debates, paleo, keto, vegan. Um, now there's a meat diet called the carnivore diet that's caught people's attention. This is what the Harvard School of Public Health suggested nine years ago. Nobody needs to redo this. It's the most reasonable template. If you were to just look up on the web, Harvard healthy eating plate, you'd be able to see a picture of this. But you can see half your plate every day should be fruits and vegetables, every day. And we're not talking potato chips. Uh, we're talking as close to garden fresh as you can. Whole grains, so there goes the bagels, there goes the the uh, donuts, we're talking brown rice, we're talking 100% whole wheat bread or pastas, uh, quinoa um, uh, are all good. And healthy protein, doesn't have to be meat, but if it is, it's not bacon, it's not salami, it's not hot dogs. 
could be lean chicken, lean turkey, but it's only a quarter of the plate. Could be just beans, could be just some tempeh or tofu. Uh, there's adequate protein in a plant diet. Uh, when this plate originally came out from the government, they had a glass of milk for everybody to drink eight times a day. But Harvard said there really isn't any credible evidence. Save some calories, save some saturated fat, drink sparkling water, drink black coffee, drink every kind of tea in the world, uh, stay away from sugar sweetened beverages and um, uh, energy drinks, stay active is in the corner. And instead of butter, lard, or maybe even coconut oil, which might cause some people to pause, you know, if you're gonna add and cook with oils, you know, pick healthy ones like extra virgin olive oil will always be the favorite of the group. Some people eat a oil-free diet as a heart uh, approach. If you wanna lose some weight, get the oils out of your diet, you'll save yourself hundreds of calories a day. So that's, we can prevent the disease that kills more people, more people in the Latin community than any other disease. We just gotta control our lifestyle. But sometimes we haven't done that so well. And we say, oh my God, I wish I would have known that 40 years ago. I've not exactly uh, hit five for five on that list of health habits. So can you detect heart disease a decade before you have a heart attack? Can you detect it a decade before you uh, drop dead? And we do that with breast cancer using mammograms, and we do that with colon cancer using colonoscopy. But when's the last time your doctor said, let's check to make sure you don't have silent heart disease so a decade from now you don't have a heart attack? They don't say that. It's not built in the medical system. And I'm gonna teach you right now what you can do, not at age 25 or 30, but maybe at age 40, 45. And just to point out these two pictures, there's a whole medical society trying to change the world by teaching early detection of silent heart disease. You know, how good are doctors when you would have looked at Winston Churchill, and you can pick many other people, you know, overweight, smoking, inactive, and lived to age 91, never had a heart attack or stroke. And some of you might remember there was a book in the 70s called The Book of Running. Jim Fix was a world famous athlete who started the marathon craze. He dropped dead at age 53 while running and had extensive heart disease. How off can we be that we aren't even close at picking who has silent heart disease and is at risk of dropping dead? We're really bad at it. And there is a group of people walking around right now in Costa Rica and Los Angeles and Detroit, Chicago, anywhere you pick. If you look that black arrow, this is what heart arteries look like when you inject them with a procedure I do called a heart catheterization. And there are people walking around, it's called the Widowmaker artery, tightly, tightly blocked like an apple core. They don't have any symptoms. They're not short of breath. They're not having horrible chest discomfort. And two weeks from now, they're having a heart attack or dropping dead. This is a problem. And how do we know that your loved ones or you aren't walking around like this? So there is a 400 year old philosophy that you are as old as your arteries. If your arteries are aging inside, again, it'd be easier if it was on our face. It wouldn't be very sightly, but it'd be easier. But if your arteries are aging inside, you're aging. You are not going down a path of long-term good health. Uh, proposed 400 years ago, very, very true. But how do we know? I'm just gonna say, it's not really as simple as I painted it. If you don't smoke, eat your vegetables, walk, get sleep, and don't drink or drink in moderation. There still are other things that cause heart disease. There are genetics. We're getting very good at measuring them. My favorite platform right now, I've been talking about eating well, exercising, don't smoke for 30 years in practice now, but there is a genetic cholesterol. If you wanted to jot a couple things down, jot down, don't smoke, eat vegetables, walk every day, get seven hours sleep, you know, uh, jot down this little thing. Lipoprotein A is a blood test that costs $20 at your doctor's. It's a cholesterol that's inherited um, by 25% of people. Well, I mean, there's one or two people right now, maybe more online, I don't know how many are attending, that probably inherited this abnormal cholesterol, but no doctor checks it routinely in 2020. Um, they will in 2025 because a new drug is being developed to neutralize and drop this. One out of every four people in some communities, one out of every three. It can silently, all your life, clog your arteries, 
clog your heart valves and end up needing bypass or stents or have a heart attack. All you gotta do is find out early in life, ask your doctor, can, next time you run your labs, I've been reading about this. This is a book that I published in March. It's uh, done very well because it's the first book in the world, basically laying out a plea, you know, get a little more than average blood work. And this would be probably my favorite one that's a little more than average. And then eat well, it turns out when you eat those brightly colored plant forward diets, you do tend to lower this kind of cholesterol as well as your overall cholesterol. So the problem with heart disease, if you look at those four arteries, a lot of us by the age that we're on this mm -hmm. webinar right now already have little tiny bits in our arteries. Well, I'll, right. I'll, if I can see anything. Can you watch it? Somebody's got their mic on. Yeah. But a lot of us have little tiny bits of plaque in our arteries. We're already aging. But if, if you look at here, when do you get symptoms? You don't get symptoms to arteries are terribly blocked. You don't want to wait that long. What if you've read about people going for an executive stress test at the Mayo Clinic or Cleveland Clinic? Those don't become abnormal to arteries that are very badly blocked. We don't take the approach of breast cancer or colon cancer. Let's wait till the disease gets really bad, then we'll diagnose it. So as you can see, the last thing on this chart, there is a CT scan. That's what I wrote about in this book, Dead Execs, some of my other books. That even at some of the earliest stages, you can get the answer to the question. I had a grandfather, I have a, a brother, my mother, somebody had a stroke, somebody had a heart attack, a bypass. I want to be sure at age 45, 40 years old, I'm not developing a silent problem that could be serious down the road. And it turns out there's sort of a specialty called heart attack prevention specialists. That's what I do. And I tell people all over the world, test, not guess. I've written that on LinkedIn so many times. Don't guess if you have heart disease, get tested. And the easiest way to get tested and a way that's been suggested, I will go through this, uh, uh, right to the next slide, is there is a CT scan. This is not an advertisement for my con center for cardiac longevity. CT scanners are at hospitals and I'm not in a hospital, I'm in a private preventive clinic in Detroit. There's a CT scan, you go on a stretcher, you get rolled into a machine, you hold your breath for five seconds and you go home. There could not be compared to a mammogram, compared to a colonoscopy, that's all it is, there's no needle, there's no injection, there's nothing, and you're exposed to less radiation than a woman is exposed to during a mammogram. And you don't know what it's gonna come out, but you might wanna know. If you look at where it says A, you can actually see the heart arteries, the very spot where plaque and future heart attacks or stents or bypass develop, and there's no abnormal calcium. Calcium is a wonderful thing to have in your bones and your teeth. You don't want calcium in your heart arteries. It means there's damage, there's injury, there's plaque, something's gone wrong. Could be lifestyle, could be genetics. If you look at number B, there's a few bright white spots. That's early atherosclerosis, early damage. And if you look at panel C, you might say that must be a dead person or that must be somebody in a corner carrying it. There's people walking around playing tennis, playing golf, going on vacations and running outside that are just like that. Very serious, silent heart disease. Because again, heart disease is often silent till a person dies or silent till they're having a heart attack. You simply don't wanna wait. So this is called a coronary artery calcium score. In my city, it's $75, you just pay out of pocket. It used to be $1,000, but it's dropped dramatically in price in the last five to 10 years. You do it once, if you've got a strong family history of heart disease or are very concerned, do it at age 40 to 45. If you're like super healthy your whole life and you really have taken good care, do it age 45 to 50. And you might never need to do it again. You wanna be what's called a zero. I've had this test done three times at age 40, age 50 and age 60. I've been a zero every time, very proud of that because that is a sign of very, very youthful arteries. The red circle is only to indicate I'm not presenting you something that's completely novel. In 2019, the American Heart Association finally said, if your doctor is handing you a prescription for a cholesterol medicine, 
you know, Selena, I'm not really happy your cholesterol is 230. Let's get you on Lipitor and get it down. I mean, Lipitor is going to lower it. But what the American Heart now endorses is maybe get the CT scan. If your arteries are super clean, you don't need a prescription drug. Eat more salads, do more running, uh, get more sleep, maybe take a natural supplement. As opposed to if that CAT scan comes back with a lot of aging, maybe you need a lot of love and cardiology attention that you had no idea about. So this is mainstream. And there is nothing better than you know planning for a half marathon, uh, or a tough mutter or going on vacation knowing that your heart score is zero compared to just living in a blind way that may be great and may be a little risky. There are some other signs of early heart disease on physical exam, losing hair on top of your head early in life, 35, 40. Um, actually graying early in life is also now known to be associated and then there's a very strange one called an airlobe crease. These are even easier to consider compared to the CAT scan, but uh, they're not certainly a direct evaluation. Some of you will recognize that perhaps handsome face is Steven Spielberg, but if you look at his airlobe, he wasn't born with that deep crease in an airlobe. That's something in the medical literature. It's actually about 70% accurate for predicting clogged heart arteries uh, if there's like a weakness in the tissue of the earlobe, it correlates with weakness in the tissues of heart arteries. So don't freak out if you look in the mirror and you see a deep diagonal earlobe crease, but you might want to get checked. I have people that come to my clinic from all over the United States just because they looked in the mirror and got concerned and sometimes it benefited them. If any guys are listening or women that like guys, ED stands for erectile dysfunction. Viagra, Levitra, Cialis, you can't help but see these ads everywhere. Turns out that can be an early warning sign that you need good blood flow for sexual performance, men and women. It's just a little easier to tell when a guy's having problems. And it is a, a proven research scientific principle that a guy shouldn't just get a prescription for Viagra. He should probably also get a prescription for this heart CT scan maybe that extra blood test called lipoprotein A, and really find out if sexual difficulties are a sign of early heart vascular problems and get it all fixed early in life. And the last and final part, PDR, prevent it, detect it, reverse it. Without going into what could be an hour long presentation, I won't. It's absolutely been known since you could argue the 1950s, 1980s, 1990s, that heart artery disease comes on for most people by smoking, inactivity, and poor diet. And you can actually help it go away, actually clean up with getting rid of smoking, getting more active, and dramatically upgrading your diet. That's a book that was published in 1990, sold millions of copies. Dr. Dean Ornish is a world famous preventive doc and still writing good books. But this has been validated all over. Most patients never get told this. You know, my grandma had heart disease and she took 12 pills. Well, somebody needed to tell grandma, you know, when you stopped eating bacon and chorizo and, uh, you know, uh, uh, donuts and churros, um, I'm picking some obviously specific ethnic food, and you got over to salads and fruits and vegetables and stir fries and vegetable soups and bean chilies. You know, that is part of what can help uh, begin to reverse a process that many of us have a little bit of. So indeed, a very famous nutrition doctor, Michael Greyer, the best kept secret in medicine is that under the right conditions, the body can heal itself. We see that all the time. We cut our finger and four days later, it's like we don't even think about it. How the heck did that happen? It's the same is true for this number one cause of risk of death, heart disease that we can regain sexual function, we can lose symptoms, we can start to reverse plaque. And the earlier we adopt and just take the principle, I'm gonna take good care of myself. My family may wanna do wing dings and, uh, you know, and chips and fried bacon on Thanksgiving, but I'm just not gonna do it. I'm gonna you know, stick to my principles and uh, eat super well, eat super quality. So what do you do? You could consider whether you want to schedule a heart calcium CT scan. It does require a prescription. 
in most states. In the state of Texas, you can just walk into a hospital and say, I want one. Uh, you want to shop around because you, you don't want to pay more than $100 for it. And all big hospitals have this test. You don't want to do it at age 25 or 30, but 40 up, you can consider it. You might want to, you know, if you've never had blood work, you might want to get your cholesterol, your blood sugar. You might want to add on this lipoprotein A. You certainly once in a while want to check your blood pressure. You could do it at the drugstore. You could do it at Costco or uh, Sam's Club, but you want to know your blood pressure and make sure it's not elevated. You want to eat this healthy version of a food plate without smoking with regular fitness and just in principle, test not guess. Be aware that heart disease exists and it's silent and it can come on and it can reverse. And most importantly, in my mind, we can detect it very early to make a difference so you never run into it. So I believe that is, and we'll just call that the last slide without cheating and looking. I think I'll stop screen share. I don't know if uh, this is a system where anybody, uh, I think there are a few things there in the chat button, I'll take a look, but the, you know, if not now, at any point, oh, thank you for adding it in, Selena. I am all over social media and things like that. But if um, anybody wants to reach out to me, maybe I'll actually type in my uh, email. If you have any questions about this, you're more than welcome to you know, send me a uh, email. I will answer it. Um, even if you wanted a script to get that CT scan in your local community, I'm happy to send it to you. It's kind of ridiculous that you have to fight some time with your primary care doctor to get one. Um, but I think, you know, short and sweet, but very powerful message. And if you're very young, like Selena is, you know, 25 years old or something, and, and I mean, just tell somebody else that's 45, 50 about this because you will do them a favor. I mean, this is the simplest, easy way, but like we have a business magazine in Detroit called D Business Magazine. And I wrote a short little business article last year called The Widowmaker, How to Avoid It. I mean, there's lots of information that I've contributed just for free on business sites, LinkedIn. I, uh, I talk a lot about test not guess on LinkedIn uh, during the week. Cool? Yeah. I don't know. Oh, there we go. Awesome. We back. You were silenced. Yeah. Uh, this has been fantastic. Thank you. I don't know if anybody, I know we're at the end of our time, but does anyone have a question? I don't have a question, but I want to say that if you um, search Dr. Khan into, uh, put into Google, you're going to find all sorts of resources. You're going to see podcasts that he does. And what I love about it is very candid and very open and very simple. Um, and you're going to find lots Joe of videos. Joe Rogan podcast for four hours. You know, look yeah. that up. If you like Joe Rogan, make sure you see a four-hour interview in the most watched podcast in the world. Yeah, Great. absolutely. So you can find so many resources. And what I loved about Dr. Khan, when Viv was asking him something earlier about some of the supplements, he said, you know, I... I Obviously, I'm not allergic to, to money, but I don't do this for the money to you know, help people and teach people. He said, for me, it's just good karma. And I love that. I, that's someone that you want to connect with. So if you know someone or have someone that needs um, good needs to be taken care of very well, um, I would definitely reach out to Dr. Khan. He does do telemedicine. And Mike Caceres, I want to let you know I am standing today because of you. <laughs> you stand at, these webinars. Okay, I'll show you guys. I'm at a standing desk, also standing, but I have a little thing under my desk where I can do twisting too. So I'm totally crazy about moving as you know part of your daily business activity. Just don't sit on your rear end too long. There's a new study. You've been sitting for 30 minutes on a call. You get down and do five seconds of push-ups. It changes your metabolism back to a more active metabolism five burpees, five jumping jacks. It, it's not really a big deal, but we just don't think about it. Viv, you gotta show them what you do with your chair. Show them how it looks like us. Viv started doing salsa in her chair. So if anybody's got a rolling chair, you can try the salsa in your chair. <laughs> yes, thank you so much. We know you have a busy schedule and you gotta get back. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Thank Thanks you, for doing us. Thank you, Dr. Khan. We appreciate you. Take care. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye. Have a good one. Thank you. Bye-bye.